Howdy folks, Little John, ah, and today's episode of the Whiskey Jar, uh, and it's going to be a little bit going on in this one, I'm um, covering a couple of things in one, uh, so we'll see how we go, but basically what I'm going to go through in today is I'm topping up my Solera barrel, I'm topping up my aging barrel and I'll be doing that with these jars here which are the spirit run I did two days ago today's Tuesday I did this on Sunday afternoon uh, and this is a spirit run done with two stripping runs of UJSSM uh, now, there's going to be going to be a fair bit to cover, uh, but there's been a few different questions which I from a few people I can cover in this one video. So hopefully, hopefully it'll all, all tie in, you know, reasonably well. Um, you just might get something out of it. Uh, before we go any further, though, big shout out to Little John's Patreons. Cheers, guys. Uh, your support is much appreciated. Uh, and make sure that uh, all these good things happen with little John. I've got the uh, resources to do you know, plenty of stuff for you guys. Uh, also subscribers, thank you very much. Uh, subscribers also keep the channel going, it's all very important. Uh, if you aren't a subscriber, hit the button down there in the corner. If you like what's going on, what little John's doing, hit the like button, that's very important for me as well. Right, uh, so anyway, what I've set today up is I've, I said I've had some questions. Now I've previously done video on a spirit run. Uh, and it wasn't super detailed. Uh, and, and I had been asked by a couple of people over time uh, about doing you know, maybe a more detailed video. Now I sat down the intention on Sunday, set this, got, the, got everything set up camera out and I started the film started the process uh, then just got got caught up with a whole bunch of d different stuff um, during the afternoon and it just didn't just didn't work out so um, so I ended up just canning, the, canning that video idea so what else what I'm going to do today is just while I'm going through this process talk about the stripping run because without actually seeing it I can talk through what it was um, which I think will help out some of those guys that were after a little bit more detail. Um, so, I'm going to start over here with the barrels. So what I'm looking to, I have, I've, I've got two barrels, I have a Solera barrel and my ageing barrel. Now the Solera barrel, um, if you aren't aware what Solera is, uh, it's a process of renewing and aging um, your product. It originally started in the wine industry in Spain. Um, Solera, I'm not, I should have looked up what the actual meaning was. Um, I think it comes from the term, in fact, it comes from the term like to Solera, which, you know, but anyway, you can look it up if you want, but essentially what it means is that each season, or each batch, you start off with your first batch in your in your barrel, and then when your next batch comes, you take some off and you put some back in. And normally it's um, it might be a third of the barrel sort of thing. Um, and obviously it's normally done in bigger size, but this works. And if you go online and do some search on Solera, you'll see that quite often like they'll have multiple barrels where it'll, do, it'll go from barrel to barrel, so you end up with this flow on process but essentially what it means is that you're constantly putting fresh stuff into your barrel but you're also aging what's in there so over time you end up with an amount of quite old you know spirit while still topping up with the new stuff so you get this you get this blend of the old with all the depth and character that goes with it and also the you know the lightness of the fresh stuff 
Um, so it also means you're getting a constantly changing product as well. It's going to be different every every season or every time you put every batch you run through it. It's going to change a little bit. Um, now, in these size barrels, it is, and especially out here in the garage where it is ex exposed to the extremes of the weather, I do get quite a lot of loss out of these barrels. Um, and I probably should have had this process done three months ago because I've lost a bit more out of these barrels than I would have liked. But the process will continue. I think I've just done a depth gauge on this. I've probably got about two litres in the Solera and I'm probably running maybe two and a half litres, possibly a little bit more in the ageing barrel. Um, but we'll leave that. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to get some, I want to get the stuff off this Solera barrel. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, I'm going to pull myself a drink. Grab yourself a good of ice. And I'm going to drain this bottle, so I'm going to refill this one. Now, this is actually the first bottle I took that was Solarid. So it was the second after two batches. Uh, and that's what's left of it. This is actually from. April last year. So it's been around for a little while. It's um, been pulled out just for some special events. Uh, it did make an appearance at uh, Daughter's Good Friends Engagement Party and also uh, a bit of a celebration of when we when we found out that the um, daughter was pregnant. Uh, so I'm going to empty him. And I'm going to, I said, I'm going to refill that bottle. That's cut to 43%. Uh, I'm just going to show there. It's, it's a little, it's a little light in colour. But it's tasty, it's good. Um, so, what I'm going to do first of all, is I need to get an alcohol reading on the current barrel because obviously it changes with age um, as the uh, the angels and the devil take their share so I'll grab myself a bit of a sample here So there. She's still fairly light. I'm not pulling a lot of colour off these barrels, but this has not been in for a long, it's not been in for a long time. The barrel did run dry on me. Um, I left it too long between batches. I had a quite a long stint, and um, as a result, lost a lot. So I'm going again. But anyway, so just check where our alcohol is sitting on this. Okay, that's sitting on about 69 percent. So she's sitting nice and strong. It's probably a little bit higher than I would like. Um, probably could have been cut a little bit, but anyway, that's the way it's going to run. So just going to run a, a quick run through the numbers here. So now. Yeah. I need 280 mils of alcohol to get 40% in the bottle. Uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm, doing, I'm doing two bottles. I'm going to do one bottle for the brother, which will be 40%, and I'm going to do a bottle for myself, which will be 45%. Actually, no, I won't. I'm just going to do the brother's bottle. Um, I'm going to leave this a little bit longer, I think, um, just to get some a top up on it. I don't throw too much out of it. So. Total of 280 mil. So that's 70 percent, 69 percent. Okay. 
So I need just over 400 mil of down this out of the barrel. I'm going to cut that with 300 mil of water, and that's going to give me about 40% in the bottle, which it uh, it's nice and happy. Yeah, just out of interest, these barrels are cheap ones from Kegland, um, and as much as they do, they do a reasonable job. I wouldn't suggest you get one. You want to do some if you really want to age your, age your whiskies, spend the money and get a get a good barrel. Um, Because but, but these are doing a good job, but they, they both leak to some degree, um, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, but then again, with the same token, they're also half the price of um, well, less than half the price of yeah, good quality of handmade one. But there's trade offs you've got to make. I'm just going to have a little bit of a Right uh, That's got all the burn you'd expect of a 69% uh, whiskey um, But the flavours under that seem to be seem to be pretty nice so I'm going to cut that with some water, which I'll get. Okay, so I use uh, Perot, P-U-A-U. Oh, exactly how you pronounce how, how it's meant to be pronounced. It says pure A-U, as in pure water. Um, I say Perot because I had a school principal when I was a kid whose name was spelled pretty much the same, but I think it had a double R. But either way, Perot, <laughs> pure, pure water. This is um, reverse osmosis. Uh, it's pretty much got nothing in it. Um, I was actually thinking on my way home, I was tempted to go and get a bloody bottle of just spring water um, and just compare the actual result. You know, distilleries normally use you know, they spring water from their limestone fed caves and stuff like that, but um, this is what I've got at the moment, so we'll stick them with that. And there's 300 mil added to our 400, which will get me enough for, our, for my barrel. Now, I will run that through some charcoal, I will filter it. Um, I don't do a big charcoal filter, I've just got a, um, well grab it out, it's very bloody rough. Yeah, you can buy, yeah, fancy expensive bloody filters, but I don't filter a hell of a lot. And all of this, I picked this up off bloody, off the net. And all I've got, it's just a, Soft drink bottle, 1.25, the bum cut off, little small hole drilled in the lid, and I've got just coffee filter papers, and I filled each one them up with, with some just with the, the charcoal, the carbon, and I just shove them in. There's about six of them in there, and I just pour through that. Um, it gives it just, it's just enough to pull off any crud that's come out of the barrel. But in all honesty, looking at that, that's very, very clear. Um, there was more, more come off that barrel when it was, when it was, when it was, you know, young and fresh. So, that's all good. So, I might, I might as well run this through while we're sitting here.
now as I said, this isn't anywhere near as effective as a, you know, spending the money and getting a good quality filter. It runs through reasonably quickly. But it's enough for me to polish the spirit and just trap any crud that's come out of the, um, out of the barrel. Um, sometimes I'll run it through twice. But this looks pretty clean, so I'm not going to worry about it. And I don't want to get too much impact on the flavour from the charcoal and the carbon. Um, so it's going to give me somewhat of a Tennessee whiskey finish. Anyway, I'm going to pop him out of the way for now. Let me do his thing over there in the background. All good. So, let's get on to topping up this salt the Solera and talking about this spirit run. Now, again, spirit run, stripping run, you'll hear these terms getting thrown around and it confuses people. Yeah. What's the difference between a spirit run and a stripping run? You're getting spirit. Yeah. Right. Basically the difference is a stripping run is just simply to strip the alcohol out of your wash. So you take your initial wash, put it in your still, run it reasonably high, and comes off nice and fast. You basically get a constant run coming out of your still, uh, and it happens quite quickly and pulls off the alcohol. The spirit run is a slower run, done on, so it's done on lower heat with less less vapour get running through the column and it comes off with a slow, it's almost, um, it's, a, it's a slow dribble, um, sort of wavers between a stream and constant drips uh, and it will give you a finer flavour. So, I said what I've done here, two, two washes of the UJSSM or two mashes, depends how you want to. It's technically not a mash, it's not technically a wash, it's sort of somewhere in between. Um, but two batches of that were put through a stripping run, then combined to do the spirit run, which this is what, what this is today. Uh, so, this is all ready to go. It's cleaner, it's finer, and it's ready to drink. But, so what I have, I've got all these jars, and you see they've all got little, it's just a sheet of napkin, um, and they're all numbered, that's number 8, 9, 10, so as, as you get, so when you start your, your run, as well, when you run, take off your methanol at the start, uh, I take off 300 millilitres of methanol, well, 300 millimetres of the initial spirit, regardless of what, it, what you want to refer to it as, that's what I take off initially. I then take a jar, I then take a, the first jar, which will be this fella here, which I've marked here as H, um, and I call that heads. And generally, I don't touch that, I don't worry about it. It's too strong flavoured and solventy to me to really worry about even trying to put into a brew. So put him aside. Not interested. Don't even want to try it. Um, just for this, just for again, it's just that touch of safety. Um, some guys, people will tell you you don't want to, you know, methanol is non-existent or there's very little of it or whatnot. But given the things that can go wrong and things that have that have happened to people over the years. I mean people have killed themselves. People still made themselves blind. People have made themselves incredibly sick, killed people by not making effective cuts with their spirit. Um, so I take no chances. I've got plenty here. I don't need to worry about what is you know, what is an effect so yeah six hundred mil. So don't worry about it. Go on. So then I start taking my first job. This is number one. We work through. So this batch was I, I topped up sort of eight litres of spirit, which was about 
50 odd percent uh, 50 well in 57 leave away I end up at 14 topped up the 14 litres in the in the robo brew put the put the top on checked it 28 percent alcohol you got to keep yourself below 40 percent to avoid vapor build up and potential explosions um, so I like to cut it down to 30 and even a little bit under um, just to be safe and I find that level I still pull off nice you know a good strength product so from here and I've done this before I'm focusing on checking the cuts and things but basically what I'm really looking at is checking these and then let's go back so so as I go through jar number one 300 mil little jar this is your first stuff coming off and then I'll take another couple of jars so I took in this case I took two jars at 300 millilitres each uh, and to, to some degree this is probably headish starting to sneak into your heart um, but this is definitely stuff I'm going to taste and see whether it's worth keeping um, from that point and I know from experience with my setup and running this sort of product that where I'm going to get I'm going to start getting decent stuff from there so from that point I steep up to a larger jar these are eight I think they're an 845 mil jar so I take about 700 mil in those and you can see one there's a whole bunch there's a bunch of those so that's number three four five six and seven you know running through the heart of the batch because I know that those big jars are going to be all good stuff and then either side is a case of how much they are and then running right through till you get down to number eight nine and ten where you're starting to run into the tails and from the tasting and temperatures i don't believe i actually really hit tails till about number nine on this and as i've said like i've said before in previous videos i like to look down here in the tails because you can find some really interesting flavors and if, but if you do find stuff you don't really want to use, you just add it to your jar of heads that you got there and originally, put them in a jar together and run them through with your next batch. Doesn't go to waste, yeah. It just gets reused, it gets re-distilled, re, re and it carries on. So you don't, you're not losing stuff, you're not wasting. You throw out one, you throw that little jar at the start, and that's that's pretty much it. So from that and from experience I know that these jars here are going to be are really in the heart where it's going to be should be nice stuff coming out of those so again working backwards but just want to talk through just quickly jar number, jar number one there come off at 78 percent 78 percent alcohol on jar number one um, so we're getting nice you know good alcohol good content Jar 2 dropped to 77, Jar 3 to 76, Jar 4 to 74, and 71, 67, 61 at Jar 7, which is the last of these big hearts jars. And, that's, and once that alcohol starts to drop off, that's when you start, that's, that's, that's your tapering into your tails. Then we drop down to 53% here, which is barrel strength. So to me, to some degree, this is your tipper. From there, you're getting into weaker stuff. So, 46% and 39%. Now, still at 39%, completely bottleable. If you wanted to at that point, you can open that and you know, just drink it. But, it's going to be fairly interesting flavor-wise. So, I want to get a filled up. I'm going to fill it up. Well, onto both of these barrels so I can start getting stuff into them without making a rotten mess. I tell ya, making your own own stuff is bloody good. Now, let me grab another funnel. Now, I want just a little glass of 
Oder? And where we go. Now, on top of top of these barrels, I also want to keep one jar because I'm going to do some oaking on it, um, which I'm not going to do today. I'm just going to put the jar aside because um, I want to do some comparisons of that. That's it. This batch is UJSSM done with just corn and sugar and sugar. Current wash I've got over here, anyone who's watched any of the lives and stuff will know that that is the UJSM base of the corn, which I've actually done a proper a barley and rye mash and added to it. So it's close up to the real deal. Um, and I want to compare the two. So I'm going to do two batches of that, strip them, do a spirit run the same as this and then basically get the two jars of the resultant you know, the, the resultant moonshine, white dogs, whatever you want to call it um, and then oak them the same and compare them but that's going to be another, that's going to be another video down the track but what I want to do now is I just want to taste this and just work out where it sort of sits flavour wise and as a result, how I want to use it into the barrels. Um, and without bloody having too much to drink, just dip a bloody spoon in. Okay, that's fairly smooth. Clean's not a real lot going on. Okay, so I'm going to put a whack of each of that in here and I'll keep some just for the moment now let me just find some space here I'm getting overrun just... okay. now number six That's a bit rough, that's rough is probably not really a fair word, but it's a bit more, a bit more bite, you've got a little bit more edge on it, so it will probably do better with some ageing, so that can go in there, and that in there just to compress some bottles. So down number nine. And I just continue to do this with each bottle. Uh, okay, there's quite a lot of flavour in that one. It's nice. Yeah, Ooh, that's good. It's got a little bit of a little bit of heat. Some nice flavour. So I'll put a Good whack of that in each of these. And the rest can go in there. Right on. Now, four, four. And just keep doing this. Now, okay. There's a lot of, a lot of there's a lot of bite in that. Now, I've got to be careful not. <laughs> Overfilling these barrels. Um, what do you have? One, two, three, four, five, three and a half, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine,
Yeah, five. Yeah, it's all good. It's not really going to push it too far. Um, so we'll hold that aside. That's a bit strong. I said that was four. So I'm going to leave three for the moment because I don't know whether I'm going to bring that through into this or not. So we'll go the other way, go up into eight. Now, and I'm pretty sure when I was tasting eight was bloody really clean. That's all going through and doing the batch. Oh, look, you could drink that as it is. That is just... Oh, yeah. It's light. It's got some nice flavour. No bite in it at all. And this is where you start balancing out those big, harsher, stronger flavours from the other end. Um, this is where you have, you, you, you've got to sort of this combination. Um, you can go through and, and done on, on previous videos and really customise several different batches. I, I could have done, you know, three or four individual jars of this size, you know, and then oak them individually and got four different whiskies, which I used to do, and it, but it just becomes bloody hard to keep track of, and I sort of just thought, nah, let's just keep it a little bit more simple. Okay, so that's jar number nine, which was, I think, 47% by memory. <coughs> and again, you could pretty much drink that as it is. Um, but these are good, because these, these will cut our alcohol down, because ideally we really don't want to, I really sh shouldn't have this aging at 69%, it's a little bit high. I don't know what this aging barrel is, so I might have to go there and get that in there. Uh, yeah. I'm going to push to the last jar. 39%. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's almost like, it's, it's like water, it's crazy, it's 39% alcohol, and it's just so soft, so again, I'm going to use that, quite often you'll find these last jars, especially this one, which is really close to the end of the run, um, will be quite harsh and not real nice, but they've, they've both come out really nice. Um, but that's also part of, you know, like keeping you, controlling your temperatures all the way through your run, um, to make sure you're getting that. So we go back, back to the start. The first of what I put was into the heart. That's got some, got some heat, but not, but it's not burning. Yeah, that's good. We'll get some of that in there. It's going to pull us back up. <laughs> and get most of that into the saging barrel, I think. Oh, no, that's getting pretty close to being full, so I'm going to get a hell of a lot more in there. So what I might just quickly do now is just take a sample on that. Get an idea of what uh, uh, you can see. There's char and oak in there. She she certainly stirred up from putting the new stuff in. Just get an idea where we're sitting. Okay, yeah, that's looking a bit better. That's, yeah, that's sitting around 60%. I'm happy with that. I don't want to go any lower than that. So that's all good. No problem at all. And that back in. Let's 
tape off there. So this is off the age barrel. And that's Okay, that's sitting right around 53, 54 um, percent, which is really nice. If you, that, that's from most stuff I've read, 53 is sort of really a number that's thrown around as you know a really sweet spot for your barrel aging. I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that little bit and just slip that between the two of them and call that a day. That's that. Now that leaves me that jar which will be My okay, so that's the UJSSM simple wash test batch, and that will go get set aside. To wait for the other. So the jar of heads and number one and number two, which I haven't even had a chance to even try, are just going to simply go into um, a bigger jar. I've, I keep, I've got some larger jars, which you've probably seen in other videos, and they will go into that uh, and wait till another day because. These are full. No point going any further with these. Uh, get that out. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll seal them up. attention just quickly back to this filtering bottle Just check the alcohol is correct. Um, oh, I picked up some crud in there. It's bloody lovely. Let's kick you out. So I said we should be looking around. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Yum. Got some nice, nice flavour. Uh, and this is this. I got, this is only re still reasonably young. Um, this is the third addition to this Solera. Um, 
and it's only been running, oh, I think since about, probably 12 months all up. So there's a, what's it, there's a, so this bottle has only been done, it's only, it's only really on um, one cycle. Uh, so it's drinking really nice for its, um, for its age and its condition. So certainly good indication for things to come through some time. And I said, that barrel then just drinking really nice. It's bloody still leaking. I'm not happy about that. Might have, to might, have to, might have to bite the bullet and buy myself a good bloody uh, good barrel from Damien Howarth. Um, uh, we shall see. We shall see. What do you reckon? Stick, some, stick something in the comments. Should, should, should I buy myself a, should, should I buy a good barrel? Um, I was I, I was tossing up really um, buying a 10 litre and really stocking it away but that just seems to be a bit excessive um, for the amount of actually whiskey I actually consume um, but maybe just a, a decent 5 five litre that's not going to leak would be a good idea uh, so but so where we are so hopefully you've got something from that that process of taking your small jars your smaller cuts um, and as I said when you're first when you're first learning getting into your into the system and I know there's a few guys that are on the channel um, that are yeah regulars that are looking at getting into into distilling um, do your small cuts mm. Get yourself some smaller jars. Um, these, the jars, these ones, these are ball mason jars, uh, preserving jars. You pick them up from yeah, Big W, places like that. Probably, um, you yeah, know, if you're in a big area, Harris Scarf or um, I don't know, Spotlight might even have them. Um, places like that. Uh, they're a about a 400 mil jar. They're not cheap. They're bloody, but they're good quality. Um, you buy them, but you can buy them by the dozen. And I think I paid somewhere around. You, you pay somewhere around forty bucks for a dozen. You pay you know, somewhere about three or four dollars a jar. They're going to last you for absolutely ever. You'll give them. Your grandkids will be using them. You know, so it's not a. You know, it's it's a one-off buy. I've got a dozen of them, you know, so you can go through the, these fellas are just cheaper, these are from Big W, they're, they work out about, they're about three bucks each for the 800, I think they're an 845 mil, that one's still got the sticker on it, and yeah, half of it's off, but I think they're 845, um, and they're a good size, but these fellas are great when you're first starting, when you're getting to learn your still, and what, what it's putting out, and where your flavours sit and also working out where the flavours are that you like um, but it's up to you how you do it you can just run straight big jars if you want but as with everything records, notes, write stuff down keep track of what's going on so you know what you did you know how to repeat it How you age stuff is that completely up to you? As it, most guys at home are just putting stuff in big jars and they're putting oak chunks and oak chips on it. Um, and there's, you know, in the original videos, there's plenty, there's stuff on that. Uh, you know, plenty of guys progress to barrels. That's a personal thing on how you want to do it. Yeah. But there's plenty of options. And I said, and coming, and it's going to be months before I get to do this comparison but it will get there because um, I'm really in, I'm really interested in that one um, as I said you know there's videos you know, actually and the thing is there isn't videos of several times I've done proper corn mashes 
I think there is one. Um, it's heavily edited because it's a bitch of a process. Um, and it is. It's a difficult process and it's time consuming. It's a pain in the ass um, doing a proper corn mash if you're doing bourbon. Um, so that's why I went down the road of Uncle Jesse's UJSSM because it's, a, it's simple and get and it does get you yeah the bulk of this stuff is UJSSM there is some proper mash in here the first addition into this Solera was real mash and the same in this aging barrel um, but for me I not, I'm not finding a massive amount of difference in the short term between the two. I mean, there's difference, but the effort that goes into that corn is crazy. So, and this is what I was trying to do. So I'm trying to find that gap between the simplicity of a UJSSM and the complexity of flavours of, of doing a proper match and trying to get the both of them together so brew day or you know wash day or mash day for your bourbon is much simpler and the process you know isn't so tedious because it does make it hard i uh, granted end of the day you can't fault your quality that you're getting and your cost and your cost factor you know, I said, that's homemade, and that's pure UJSSM in, in that barrel. There was no, no grain mashes in that. that, that that's UJSSM completely. It doesn't have the complexity and, and, the, and the woodiness of a, yeah, a proper aged bourbon, so it hasn't been aged. But for drinkability, cheap, you can't go wrong. And that's another thing, that's it. Another option, another decision you need to, you've got to make, and this is where these come in. Aging, how long are you willing to let stuff sit around and age in condition before you drink? That's what these, that's what these barrels are for, it's about not just simply sticking this stuff into a two, two litre jar with you know, 200 grams of, of oak and letting it sit for six to eight weeks, pulling the oak out, filtering it and, and then drinking it. Um, that's very limited in what you're going to get. You're getting a bourbon like product, it will get you drunk. It does the job and we mix it with some coke and it tastes all right. Uh, and if all you ever drink is Jim Beam White Label or bloody, you know, the bottom rum, and you're not, you're not, you're not looking to get into the higher end of the, the spirits, then that's going to do you fine. If you don't mind stepping into the good stuff, into something a little bit more depth, a bit more character, a bit more flavour, then this sort of thing is where you want to be going. And, then, and this is where and this is where we'll be testing down the track in given time. Um, and I said that's the last Solera. That's the current one. Very similar. This one's got a little bit. A tad more burn in it. As I said, that one has sat a little bit longer, it's had time to smooth. And probably you get double filtered where this one's only about single filtered. But that really shows that there's a massive amount of options available to you with, with the spirit. From your wash to your mash. To your temperatures, to your aging processes, to what you're aging with, 
and they all have an impact and they're all back and they're all part of creating your own individual nectar of the gods so take from this what you will if you want to clarify anything you got any questions any comments stick them down the bottom um as I always say I am in no by no way or any means an expert on distilling um I do it I play around I get results I look at what I do and you know learn from that you want to point something point something up go ahead if you haven't subscribed to little John hit the button down there in the corner so it says subscribe it's easy it's a big big red one there's a bell there hit that as well hit the like button if you're liking what's going on and if you do like what's going on have a look at patreon maybe patreon's for you a little, little bit extra involved uh, that being said for all the patreons cheers once again uh, shout out to um, Kane Canuda. Uh, probably should have pointed out a little bit earlier in the day but anyway Kane I'm pretty sure you'll stick around and watch all of this uh, cheers mate thanks for joining the um, joining the crew but for now that's little John I'm out whiskey jar number I'm, I'm going to take the shot in the dark I'm going to say number 16 could be 15. Either way, whiskey, whiskey jar, done, little John. Until I see you again. Cheers.